Hi there. In this video, I'm going to quickly talk through the main theorems in section 7.5 called inequalities in a single triangle. <clears throat> so this tells us how within a triangle, the size of various angles and the size of various sides are related. And it's an idea that probably feels very straightforward and kind of obvious once you have the right picture. We're not going to go into the proof, but I do want you to know what these theorems say. So theorem 7.5 says if two sides of a triangle are not congruent, then the angles opposite them are not congruent, and the larger angle is opposite the longer side. So let's look at an example. So maybe I have a triangle like so. Oops. So here's ABC. And what we'll notice is that BC is bigger than AB, right? We see that pretty clearly in the diagram. Maybe I would have specific measures. Well, what will always be true is if BC is bigger than AB within that triangle, then the angle opposite the longer side will be bigger than the angle opposite the smaller side. So what this implies is that angle A is bigger than angle C. And remember, I mentioned this in one of the sections that maybe we kind of skipped over. This is just our abbreviation for saying it's a bigger measure. We are allowed to say an angle is bigger when we mean the measure is bigger. So if we have two sides and we know which one is bigger, then the opposite angle is bigger than the other opposite angle. And the converse is true. So maybe I have a triangle where I'm starting with the knowledge that one angle is bigger than another. So here angle D, here's angle E, and I'm starting with the knowledge that angle D is bigger than angle E. So here's angle D, it looks like it's about 100 degrees or so. Here's angle E, it looks like it's about 30 degrees. When that occurs, the side opposite the bigger angle will be bigger than the side opposite the smaller angle. So what will be true is that EF will be bigger than DF. It's the converse of what we saw before. And if we use this multiple times, we can compare all three sides. So this is not its own theorem. But we don't have to compare two sides at a time, we can compare three. So I will just say in a scalene triangle, scalene means it's not isosceles, all three sides are different. The biggest side is opposite the biggest angle, and the shortest side is opposite the smallest angle. And by process of elimination, the middle side is opposite the middle angle. So for example, if I just draw a triangle like so, And maybe we have this is 5, and this is 7, and this is 9. And let's say x, y, z. What we would know is that the longest side is segment x, z. Oh, sorry. Well, we already see that. Sorry about that. What we would know is that the biggest angle is opposite the longest side. The smallest angle is opposite the smallest side. And then by process of elimination, the middle angle is opposite the middle side. Now, what I want to be clear on here is that these relationships are true only in a single triangle. 
right? A mistake some people make is when they try to jump from one triangle to another. And let me just illustrate how you can see that that's wrong. So let's suppose that I tell you that this is six. And let's suppose we have something like this. So here's triangle ABC and that's a length of six. And then maybe here, This is a length of seven, a little bit longer. But we have a triangle like so. Here's D, E, F. So here's what's incorrect, but I've seen people do this, so be very aware of this. I've seen people say, because D, E is bigger than A, C. Here's, right, when I'm comparing those two segments, DE is bigger than AC. The angle opposite DE is over here at F. The angle opposite AC is over here at B. So if people are not paying attention, sometimes they'll say, because DE is bigger than AC, then angle F is bigger than angle B. But if you look at the picture, that's not true. Angle B has a bigger measure than angle F if we just estimate from the picture. So be really careful about this. You can only use this rule about comparing bigger angles to bigger sides within a single triangle. Once you start comparing between two triangles, it doesn't work. And even if they overlap, it doesn't work. So in the practice problems, you'll see an example of two triangles that share a side be really careful about using your judgments only for one triangle at a time. But the gist of this is within a triangle, biggest sides are opposite biggest angles, smallest sides are opposite smallest angles, and you'll have a chance to practice that a little bit in class.